Most of the demos we saw before were created using the standard style sheets package with the Open Toolkit. These demos provide a quick start to producing standard output, but it would be severely limited if that's all you can do. Fortunately, the Open Toolkit allows it to be extended with your own processing logic and build tasks. You can also register specialized information types. This allows customized output with specialization handled in the most appropriate way. The recommended way to extend the Open Toolkit is through plugins. Let's now have a closer look in part 4 of this webinar at how you can use the Open Toolkit and the extension mechanism. To kick off a process in the Open Toolkit you would generally need to write a build file. In the overview we had a brief description of the Open Toolkit. We learned that the Open Toolkit is a pipeline of different processing steps. And scripts are used to chain the steps together. Basically, in a user build file you do the following. You initialize the build by setting the name of the build project, default target to build and working directory. Next, you define properties to be used later in the build process. The Open Toolkit base directory is such a property. Next, you import any build files needed for your build and you run the Open Toolkit integration to integrate any newly or modified plugins installed. This last step is not really required but highly recommended. Finally, the user build file must call the main build file called build.xml with the input file, output folder and transformation type as arguments. Here is an example on how to invoke a build process for HTML output. A user build file builds an output deliverable. You can create standard out of the box output like some of the examples we saw in the section explaining what you can do with the Open Toolkit. You can also create your own output by customizing one of the standard outputs of the Open Toolkit or create, or create complete new types of output. Let's see how you can customize the output. First, it is important to realize that the user build files are not meant to customize the Open Toolkit but to kick off a build. You use the extension mechanism to customize the Open Toolkit. Before delving into the extension mechanism, we need a deeper understanding of how the Open Toolkit works. A build in the Open Toolkit consists of four stages. The first stage is the build initialization. Next, there is the pre-processing step. Then a generic topic transformation takes place. The last stage is a transformation to the requested output type sometimes involving a rendering engine. The processing required for each of these steps are performed using built-in and scripts. Three build files of the Open Toolkits are worth noting at this point. Build preprocessed XML, which is used for preprocessing. Build general XML, which is used for generic topic transformation to XHTML or HTML build.xml, the main build process. These three files are recreated each time a build is run. That's why you can't run the Open Toolkit from a read-only folder, like the Program Files folder in Vista or Windows 7. The reason why these files are recreated is to support the extension mechanism to allow you to inject common processing into the build process. We will explore the first two steps or two stages a little bit further. The build initialization stage has six steps. Step 1 starts the processing and doesn't do anything else. In step 2, the login mechanism is configured with the log directory and file name. Step 3 initializes the URI resolver with, with the Open Toolkit installation directory and temporary folder. Step 4 initializes the software tool usage. It determines the availability of Saxon, Apache FOB 
or Microsoft HTML workshop. In step 5, input arguments are checked and validated. A failure state is set for invalid arguments. For example, an XSLT file that cannot be found. This step also outputs the parameter used for the build process. Step 6 is to output parameter info and warnings, such as the use of deprecated input arguments or usage of absolute paths for CSS files. The latter may cause build problems. As you can see from the legend, a combination of the Open Toolkit's Java processing engine and end scripts are used in this stage. The majority of the work is done in the build pre-process. This stage has many steps. Step 1 starts the pre-processing. Step 2 generates a list of files with or without flagging. Also in this step, debug information is inserted. The updated files are placed in the temporary directory. All input source files are touched during this step. Step 3 is performed depending on debug settings and a data file file being present. Step 4 copies images, HTML, data file generated and subsidiary files to the output folder. Step 5 resolves conref push by including the content into the topic at the specified target. This step was added in the data open toolkit 1.5. Step 6 resolves conref by including the reference content into the topic and maps. Only file files that use conref are modified, though files with conref target are also accessed. Step 7 moves metadata from the data map into the topics, supplementing or replacing metadata in the prologue element. It pushes index terms, product info and other metadata from the map into reference topics. Step 8 resolves key references. Key references are direct, indirect or late bound references. This step was added in the Data Open Toolkit 1.5. Step 9 resolves code references. CodeRef is a new Data 1.2 element that may reference external files such as code samples. These code samples are then rendered in line. This step was added in the Data Open Toolkit 1.5. Step 10 resolves references to entire data maps and merges submaps into a single map. Step 11 pulls metadata from topics into the map, updating titles, short description and so on. Also in this step, inherited information is made explicit. For example, if the scope setting of a topic ref element or current is inherited, then that value will be set explicitly for that occurrence. Also, inheritance of metadata through the topic meta element is cascaded to all nested topic references. In step 12, both the map and topics are processed to resolve chunk commands. This step may create new topics and or modify existing topics. Step 13 generate, generates links based on the map such as navigational structure, relationship table, etc. This step, uh, this step also updates titles and short descriptions from step 11. It creates a temporary file with all of the generated links. Step 14 moves links from the temporary file generated in the previous step into reference topics. Step 15 pulls in the metadata for link and crossref elements to resolve references within the topics. For example, navigational text for an inline cross-reference is resolved unless the text was explicitly specified by the author. This step runs on every topic. The build pre-process can be extended with before and after processing. Each step can be extended with before processing. 
Now let's have a look at the extension at how the extension mechanism works. Customization of the open toolkit must be drawn through extension points defined in a plugin. Plugins may do a number of things, such as adding support for specialized DTDs or schemas, integrating processing overrides, or providing entirely new output form transforms. Extensions are integrated using a file named plugin.xml. It is a file with the configuration settings for the extensions. It must be put in the plugin's main directory. The plugin directory itself is generally located within the demo or plugin subfolder of the Open Toolkit installation folder. A folder structure like the one shown in the image is recommended. The root element of the plugin XML is called plugin and it must specify an ID attribute. The ID attribute is used to identify the plugin. The plugin element can contain feature child elements to define extensions through extension point. The require element is to define prerequisite plugins by referencing the plugin IDs that can also specify the importance of these plugins being available. The plugin in itself can be extended and if that's the case the template element is the name of the template file to be used. This completes the plugin definition. Here's an example plugin. It has two features, one to define the version of the plugin and another one that uses an extension point to add customized processing.